Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, we will learn how to work with Amazon CloudFront policies. Prerequisites for this tutorial is knowledge of Amazon CloudFront. Hence, if you do not know what this service is all about, please refer to this overview tutorial. The link to the tutorial is mentioned right here at the bottom. I will also have this URL posted in the description of this video. These are some reference URLs, and I would definitely encourage you to visit these URLs as they have additional information on this particular topic. I will also have these URLs posted in the description of the video. Let us begin this tutorial with what is a cache key? A cache key is a unique identifier for every object in the cache. So let's consider you have a database table and in that table, you have a primary key. So every record that is present in that table can be easily identified by that primary key because that's a unique identifier for that record. Similarly, cache key is a unique identifier for every object that's present in the cache. So if you want to retrieve an object from the cache, basically you need to have the cache key and that object will be served to you. So let's assume that you get a viewer request, right? So you viewer request comes in. So now when you get this viewer request, depending on whether that cache key is present in the cache, it will either result in a cache hit or a cache miss. So you may ask, what is a cache hit? A cache hit occurs when a viewer's request generates the same key as one of the prior requests. And as a result of that, the object that cache key uh, holds is present at the edge locations cache and is still valid. So let's say a viewer request comes in, right? The request has the cache key. It says, I want this particular object and this is a cache key. Now, if somebody else prior to you had requested the same object, of course, using the same cache key, then that request will be present in the cache. Of course, it has to be valid still. And if that object is present in the cache, then the viewer request will be fulfilled with that very same object. And we will call it a cache hit. So in short, when a viewer's request is fulfilled, right, with the object that is present in the cache, it is called as a cache hit. Now, on the other hand, let's say if the object that the viewer had requested is not in cache, in that case, it's a cache miss. And of course, since it's not present in the cache anymore, CloudFront will send that request to the origin to get the object. So it is as simple as that. I hope that this particular concept is clear. Now, everyone wants a better performance of their website or the application. And the easiest way to do that is to ensure that you have a high cache hit ratio, right? So most of your viewer requests should be fulfilled using the content, using the objects that are stored in the cache. So that way you don't have to go all the way to the origin to get that information. So in short, your application's performance is directly proportional to the number of cache hits you have. The higher number of cache hits you have, the better your perf application performance. Now you will ask, how do I improve my cache hit ratio, right? How do I get a higher cache hit ratio? The easiest way to do that is to include only minimum necessary values as part of your cache key. So the lesser number of values, the better the cache hit ratio and better your application performance. So in order to ensure that there are only minimum necessary values as part of your cache key, you can use a CloudFront cache policy, right? And you can attach the, this policy to one or more cache behaviors for a CloudFront distribution. So let's consider this example. Now, this example is basically requesting for example, 
story HTML. And this is the host or the location from where it is requesting this particular file. So by default, the cache key for the CloudFront distribution will be the domain name and the URL path of the requested object. So this is the simplest or the bare minimum uh, values that you should use for your cache key. Now, of course, you will say yeah, you can have query strings, you can have response headers, you can have cookies, you can have n number of things going in your cache key. But remember the intention is to keep the cache key simple. Keep the cache key with only minimal values so that your cache hit ratio goes up and thereby your application performance goes up. So I hope this concept of cache key is cleared because we'll be using this knowledge further ahead. What are the different types of CloudFront policies? There are three different types of policies. First is of course, CloudFront cache policy. Then it's the origin request policy and the response headers policy. Let us look at each one of them. So the first one is CloudFront cache policy. We saw this earlier as well when we were talking about cache key, that the CloudFront cache policy is used to control the cache key. So, Remember your intention is to improve or have a higher cache hit ratio. And in order to do that, you can use this cache policy, right? To ensure that your ratio improves, it's on the higher side and thereby applications performance also improves. And you already know that you need to keep the cache key as simple with minimal values as much as possible. And the reason I'm repeating this, I think I repeated myself for twice or thrice already, is because this can be an interview question. They can ask you, how will you create a cache key? What do you, what all do you consider creating a cache key? Why should you have a cache key with only minimal values? What if you have, you know, your query strings, your response, your HTTP headers, your cookies going into cache key? What kind of an impact can uh, it, it have on your application's performance? The whole reason behind it is to have a higher cache hit ratio. Or the other interview question could be, how can you have a higher cache hit ratio? What all will you do to ensure that your cache hit ratio uh, is on the higher side? Or they can give you a situational question that you're having this application, but the cache hit ratio is poor. So how can you improve your cache hit ratio? So all of these questions can easily be answered by what we just discussed in the last few minutes. Another thing that you can do with cache policy is that you can specify time to live, TTL, right? For the objects that are stored in the CloudFront cache. So this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Let's continue further ahead. The next policy that we have over here is CloudFront origin request policy. Now I want you to focus on the name. The name says origin request policy, right? That means you are basically sending this request to the origin. So let's say a, a viewer request comes in, right? And that particular piece of content is not present in the cache. That means it's a cache miss. In that case, CloudFront will send that request to the origin to retrieve that object. So this request, that is sent to the origin is called as the origin request. So even before we continue further ahead, I want to highlight something. Remember the, that the cache policy was to improve the cache hit ratio. So you basically want to ensure that every time a viewer request comes in, it has to be a cache hit. That's what you're trying to do. That's the intention behind this policy is to have uh, is to control your cache key, is to improve your cache hit ratio, right? And that's what you're trying to do over here. This policy, the origin request policy, comes into picture when there's a cache miss. That means it's the opposite of cache hit. That, so whenever you got that request, it did not result into a cache hit. That request, that particular object was not present in the cache. That request was not fulfilled by your cache. So you have to now go to the origin and retrieve that object. So this particular policy comes into picture when there's a cache miss. So that's a critical difference between the two. And again, this can be an interview question 
as to when you will use the cash policy versus when you will use the origin request policy. So please keep this in mind. There's a the 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 usage is very different. One is to increase the cash hit ratio, and the other one comes in when there is a cash miss. So let's say you have a cash miss now, and you have this origin request which you are sending to the origin. So from the viewer request that you have got, you will of course add the URL path if there's any request body, if there are any HTTP headers. I've mentioned some headers over here. And along with that, of course, you will add your cache key. So all of this gets bundled up. Cloud Fund bundles all of this, sends to the origin, and it is called as the origin request. And this is basically to retrieve that object from the origin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this origin request policy comes into picture when an origin request is being created and is sent to the origin, right? Because you had a cache miss. So in case you want to include any additional values as part of this origin request without including them as part of your cache key, you can use this particular policy. So you can keep your cache key to the minimal set of values and use this origin request policy to add any additional values like HTTP headers, whatever else, cookies, whatever, a query string, whatever it may be. You can use this policy so that it bundles up everything and then that request is sent to the origin and you can still keep your cache key to those minimal values. So I hope that this thing is clear. The third policy that we have is a response headers policy. Now, again, I want you to focus on the name. This is a response header policy, right? The two policies that we just discussed earlier, the cache policy and the origin request policy, those came into play when the request came in. So let's consider that this is your viewer, right? Viewer request coming in from wherever your web application or wherever. This is CloudFront. And I'm just gonna say cache over here just to keep it simple. And this is your origin. So a viewer request came in, let's assume that you had a cache hit, your cache policy came into picture and you got the object and you sent the response back to the viewer, great. Now, if it was a cache miss, of course you created an origin request policy and you sent it further ahead, right? And the origin request came, the request policy came into the picture, you fetched the object from the origin, of course you stored it back in the cache and sent the response back. So of course, when the viewer request was coming in, those two policies were playing a picture. Now this policy comes into the picture when you're sending the response back to the viewer. Remember, it's a response headers policy. So you're sending the response back to the viewer. So this particular policy helps you to control the HTTP headers that CloudFront includes in the HTTP response that is sent back to the viewer, whether it's a web browser, your application, whatever the case may be. This policy also helps you to remove any headers from the origins HTTP response. That means when this response came back and you wanted to remove something from that, you can do that. At the same time, if you want to add any additional HTTP headers to the response before sending it to the viewer back, right? You can certainly do that as well. And all of this can be done without making any changes to your origin or writing any code. So again, the first two policies were request. This is a response policy. First policy came into the picture to kind of improve or have a higher cash hit ratio. That's the cash policy. The second policy, the origin request came in when you had a cash miss to go and retrieve that particular object from the cash, right? You can add more or additional information to that origin request at the same time keeping your cash key at a minimal and uh, at a minimal with simple uh, you know values in it nothing complicated you just want minimal number of values being present and then when you're sending your response back if you want to change that response you want to manipulate that response you want to add anything to that response right you want to remove something from your origins http response certainly you can use the response headers policy so I hope that this entire concept was clear. 
now you'll come and say, hey, this is way too much. You know, I like, I don't think I have, I can I have the knowledge or I have the time to, you know, write this whole thing. I don't think I can maintain these policies. It's just too much. Well, you might be in luck because CloudFront does have certain set of managed cash policies for a specific set of use cases. So if your use case is one of those use cases that these managed cash policies or request uh, origin request policies or response header policies address, then you can certainly use these policies out of the box. All that you need to do is attach these policies to your distribution. You don't need to write any code or maintain the policy. It's already done because it's managed and you're all set. So all, what I have over here are the list of managed cache policies, origin request policies, and response header policies that are available to you. And I'm not going to double click on each one of them. The reference URLs that I shared earlier do have additional information on each one of these policies. As I said, these policies address a specific use case. So if you know your use case and you can go and look at you know, these policies, if you see that these policies addresses your use case, you are in luck and you can use these policies. If not, the only way out will be that you will have to write your own policy and maintain it. So I have that reference URL opened over here. So these are some managed cache policies as you see over here, and you can double click on these links. It's pretty straightforward, very simple, nothing crazy. Again, depending on your scenario, if one or more of these policies work for you, feel free to use them, right? These are the managed origin request policies again, and these are managed response header policies. They are all scenario-based. They address a specific use case. So ensure that you understand the use case, right? And if it's applicable to you, feel free to use them. So this is it from me, guys, today. I hope that this concept was clear. Uh, I know a couple of folks have requested for a hands-on lab for this, but before I get to the lab, I need to clear some you know, basics. So hope, hopefully this is clear and I will see you shortly with some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.